Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be working in my sketchbook as it's going to be another little sketchbook session. I'm going to keep today's session kind of simple. I am just going to be using graphite and then I think I'm going to use watercolor to spruce up the sketch a little bit. And I haven't done this method in what feels like quite a while and I'll explain kind of why and why I treat it a little bit different from just adding like watercolor generally to my sketches. Um, so let's sketch out my Usi Maseki. So I've been drawing him a lot more. I think it's because I was trying to plan out a lot of stuff for um, that Genshin version of him that I did for Saturday's video last week. But yeah, I've just been kind of like on a high of just drawing him a lot. So I have actually this little sketch of him that I doodled really, really quickly, but I think it looks really cute. So I kind of want to do a larger version. So that is what I'm going to do. It's basically him just leaning on like a bag. I kind of wanted to have like a bag more designed towards like Masaki himself just because I want to like, I want a bag that he would like utilize if that makes sense. I've always drawn him with like a plain kind of like messenger bag or crossover kind of bag. I don't know how you explain it, like a laptop bag that's kind of just brown like it's kind of like in place of his apron color if that makes sense so whenever he's in the, like more of a different setting where he's not at work and he's not wearing his apron i wanted something to be kind of like equally as brown so that it could complement his outfit as usual so i actually have him kind of have like a bag i was thinking like a backpack could work but i always think like he'd be the type to have like a like a messenger bag or like a laptop bag something that like slings across your body and that could hold like a fair amount of stuff i just think it's more convenient for someone like him so yeah i have him kind of just like leaning over on top and kind of just squishing it forward and another reason why i wanted to do this is that i could kind of focus a little bit on the shading and the squish of the bag a little bit when i'm going to be actually pushing the values and kind of shading, kind of rendering things to a certain level that I think, you know, that I kind of enjoy and I tend to do this if I'm working with graphite. Um, yeah, if you guys like seeing me work with graphite, I have like a few videos where it's kind of like a, is it a keep me company video? I'm not too sure. It's basically a long form video about one to two hours long. And it's just me purely just sketching in real time. So you guys are more interested in that rather than this time-lapse footage. Maybe it's more suitable. Who knows? Um, or maybe it's an ASMR. I think they're ASMRs actually. So you can probably find them on my ASMR playlist if you're interested. And put some background music if you do not like listening to kind of like low humming noise and then scratching and scratching of the pencil to the paper. So I had a hard time trying to get lighting that would work so lighting that worked good on the paper created an immense amount of glare for me so i couldn't see what i was doing or how dark i was making things or i could have the paper really poorly lit and then i would be able to see so it's like kind of a juggle between the two i think i found a happy medium um in the end but i kind of switched perspectives a few times trying to adjust um so i could see what i was shading so generally when I'm working with like pencil or graphite or more or less like any dry medium, so like this could be pencil, it could be charcoal, it could be Conte, it could be pencil crayons, like anything of that sort. Um, if I'm deciding to push it further and kind of pick up and push the contrast a lot more, I like to establish my dark areas, but I'm kind of like focusing in on one area at a time. I never, I know like a lot of people, including my professors, I do apologize, um, but they would always say general to specific. So like work on a whole area, not a whole area, work on the whole piece at the same time, right? Bring it up at the same rate. Um, so you make sure that things look even or, you know, nothing stands out too much compared to another thing because you spent too much time on one object kind of thing. Um, but I think I did an okay job usually uh, of making sure there's not that weird, unbalanced feeling for um, any of the values and stuff. And I think it's also because like, for me, I love establishing the darkest areas first so that I can have the full range, especially like working on white paper. The white, pa the white of the paper will always be the brightest 
proportion if I'm working um, in this way. Like I know some people can use like tonal paper and stuff, so like gray or brown paper, and then you have a mid-tone and you can add highlights after. But because I'm working on a white page and all I can do really is to add value, it's easier for me to understand that if I press really hard with my pencil, that's basically the darkest value that I'm gonna get. And then everything else in between is kind of like my mid-tones and gray areas. So it just helps me establish a range. So you can see while I'm working, so sometimes I'm pushing like little corners of the sleeve and making that super dark and then shading it after so that I can tell you know, things that might need to be pushed further or I know have to go light and kind of slowly build up value so I don't reach the point of making it super, super dark. Um, so when I'm doing the belts, you can see it really obviously too. I kind of make the edges like on the right side really, really dark um, or some corners I do that and then gradually fade out because it's easier for me to go and like just figure out my values this way. I don't know if this is just too much value talk, but yeah. Uh, I love working with graphite. I don't know if you guys can tell. I think that's why I enjoy doing like the ASMR videos where I'm just focused on drawing figures and drawing characters that I like and then just kind of pushing values and cleaning and sprucing it up. So, hmm. Uh, but another thing is like, sometimes I press too hard too quickly. So you can see that I did like the outline of the, the flap of the bag. Um, fairly dark and I forgot that I needed to have the belt the right one um, kind of pass through it so I kind of made an oopsie I guess but I was able to kind of salvage it by kind of putting it very close to the flap itself and then while I'm shading it I was able to kind of make it look like it's blending in but you can see how I'm kind of working is very much like section by section so I do his face, kind of his hair, I did the one hand, and then I moved on quickly to, I think, the sleeve and the arm, and then I moved to the left belt, then the right belt, and then the little center metal part, and then now I'm working on solely kind of like the upper portion of the bag, so that I could, I don't know, I just like separating it like this, even though sometimes, yeah, like I said, you could get into an area where you might make the piece look unbalanced because you focus too much on one area rather than the rest. Um, Hmm. I think that's about it. So, um, to be honest, I think at this point, I already really liked the drawing. So I just wanted to push the values to make it like look a little bit more finished of a sketch. And then later on, I was still debating whether or not I wanted to add color. Um, cause I think I have like a Kazuha piece and a different Masaki piece that I've done in the past where I've added watercolor washes on top of like an already somewhat rendered and somewhat shaded um, pencil sketch. And I do like the look, but looking at the sketch just how it is, I just, I don't know. I just love looking at people's like pencil sketches a lot. I always admire people who have like such expressive or gestural pencil sketches or just even like people who go super clean, which I kind of lean more towards too um, when I work, but um, I love seeing people sketch. I think that's what really pushed me to focus a lot on like my pencil sketching and stuff, especially like during my uni days, because I think from like eighth grade till high school even, I focused a lot on digital work just to be kind of like stunted, I guess, but I didn't do a lot of traditional work as much. But the thing I love the most about traditional work is actually working with pencil. I just love adding value and being able to, um, I don't know, you can kind of work in a cartoony way or you can work in a very like rough way, but if you take your time, you can get things to look really smooth and really realistic. I don't know. There's like a versatility that I do like about pencil and I know a lot of people kind of don't like pencil because they think it's messy or, you know, the aftermath where it's good, like the pages smushed together will make it smudge or you kind of have to protect your paper, any of that. I don't know. I like, I like graphite and I will protect it, I guess, in my sketchbook if I need to. Um, but luckily, if you do a similar method and you use watercolor washes on top of your sketches, maybe keep it light if you want to kind of more retain the pencil sketchiness, it kind of seals your drawing. So water on the paper, 
does a good job of sealing your lines into the paper so for the most part i will probably won't have to keep a paper in between this one and the page um, over and even if i do end up accidentally smudging a little bit i don't really mind the sketches on the left page isn't that like precious to me so it's okay and i know these ones like this one in particular will kind of keep intact so it's not too much of an issue but the water does help seal the graphite in so not too big of a mess but yeah, you can kind of see I'm just picking areas to shade. And at some point, I will remove the bottom little binder clip. Because I noticed, like, what's the point of having this weird gap if the binder clip's not going to stay here forever? So I decided to fill in the bottom of the bag. And then I think I add a shadow to the bottom of the bag too. And to the side of his elbow. So that it looks like he's resting on a surface. Hmm. So I think that's pretty much it for the pencil uh portion I, I went a little bit more rough than how i usually work i think if you look at any of my pencil work for like the asmr videos i try to keep everything very soft and very i don't know more intentional if that makes sense so there's like some areas where i'm like adding shading and stuff underneath for like shadows in the bag and stuff where it's kind of just like deliberate scribbling but i don't really care if it goes in like a certain direction or if it goes in different directions Especially like, I don't know, in the bag, you can kind of see some areas. So for prep, I decided that I wanted to make sure to remember. I don't think that sentence made sense. I wanted to remember to add a piece of cardboard or some thicker type of paper underneath this page. I've always had issues and I'm super lazy or oftentimes I just forget that I need to add something underneath my pages because if I don't, usually near the seams because of where the stitching is for the binding of the book is sometimes water and extra moisture goes there and it causes like the subsequent pages after to really warp along with the moisture it doesn't exactly like fully soak through so i don't really worry about like bleed through but the excess moisture sometimes goes to the next page and usually after I do like painting or any wet medium in a sketchbook and you don't see me do graphite on the page behind it, let's say, it's usually because like the paper starts to really warp and to bubble up and it's hard for me to sketch. I love paper that's like completely flat, like absolutely flat, which is why like in the past, sometimes I would wear like a drawing glove or I'll have like a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper under my hand or even like my sweater sleeve over my hand. Cause like, I don't know if it was like when I was younger, I actually had this conversation with my brother too. Cause like my brother growing up, he like sweats really easily. Like we would walk in like, I think Hong Kong and like his entire back would be soaked in sweat. Even though like, it was like what, 29 degrees? celsius or 30 degrees celsius 32 or something like that but his back was like completely soaked um so he's like really prone to sweating but he told me like literally a few days ago he's like i don't think i sweat that much like maybe i grew out of it and i'm like mm, maybe i don't know but i i think i'm the same way that or i'm just less anxious wow i just went on the biggest tangent but basically like i keep a piece of paper or something underneath my hand um Usually because like I prevent things from smudging, like we'd have to move the paper up from the page and move it over instead of like sliding it around. Otherwise, like you're still smudging your your dry medium or whatever. But I would do it actually because like my hands would get clammy. I don't know if like I said if it's because like I'm anxious or I'm nervous, but like sometimes you get like sweat, right? Or like clamminess from your hands. And even that on thin paper like let's say printer paper would actually warp the page um due to like moisture and stuff so yeah i got into a habit of just making sure that things were under my hands when doing a lot of like my dry mediums and stuff but recently or at least like the last few years i don't think i really had to worry about that like i mostly placed like papers or anything like let's say wax paper tracing paper, cardboard, anything like that, a drawing glove, only because like I wanted to prevent my hand from smudging the drawing underneath. I know the glove seems like it wouldn't really work, but I think me having the glove just indicates for me like, hey, remember to move your hand. Um, but yeah, 
As for the washes, I try to keep the washes not too damp so that you can see that I'm not like super spreading around the the pigments and the water too too much compared to like when I do paintings for my gouache like my rough painting part for my gouache paintings. Um, I'm trying to keep the water very limited because I don't want the page to warp too much even though I do have it clamped down but yeah this is kind of the look that I kind of liked. Um, I know if I think for like the Kazuha one, I'm not too sure if the other Maseki one has it, but I actually went back in with a either a ballpoint pen or another black pen just to make the lines a little bit darker in some areas and it makes it really pop. But I think this actually looks really pretty. I actually like the bag more than I how I drew Maseki. But hopefully in the future I'll draw Maseki more because I've been I really miss drawing him. So yeah. Um, hope you guys enjoyed today's little rambly sketchbook video. Um, but yeah, I'll talk to you- well, I can't talk. I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye! You need more contrast, so I added ballpoint pen. Okay, now bye. <laughs>